Yeah. Recording in progress. Welcome to the very first episode of Acting Around with your host, Fergus Foster. And today I have the pleasure of introducing a very special friend of mine who has been in the industry for a long time an actor extraordinaire. He's been doing this for decades, treading the boards on film, TV, you name it, he's done it. Mr. Stanley Brown. How are you doing today, Stanley? <laughs> I'm good, Fergus, nice one. Lovely introductory, by the way. Make me feel special. That's it, well, well, special people for the first guest of this amazing podcast, which we got going on here. So, yeah, I was going to ask you some icebreaker questions and stuff, but you know what? We don't really have the time and people don't really want to hear about that. We want to hear about the nitty gritty of this industry. We want to hear about the brass tax, as you call it. So first off, I know you've mm -hmm. had this long established career. I want to know, what do you think makes, how do you thrive as an actor in this modern day time? How do you use mm. J. Brown thrive? Interesting. Um, I mean, the, the choice of word thrive. Um, uh, thrive, survive. How do you keep going? Um, well, for me, of course, it's about, you know, mentally, 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 it's about, it's a numbers game, isn't it? You you keep going for them auditions. You keep, you know, um, I'm very fortunate to have a, a good agent. That really helps, of course. Um, for some who don't have an agent, you know, you're constantly on spotlight and you're doing, you know, you're putting in the groundwork. The way I thrive in this industry is I just keep auditioning, keep auditioning, keep auditioning. In between, I do workshops. You know, as we know, we both, that's how we met, didn't we, on a workshop, you that's know? Right. Yeah. And I think for me that, that it's, these, these, are the, these are the basics, do you know what I mean, of looking after oneself um, until one gets that next job. So I, I'm a jobbing actor, do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, you, you know, going back to this word thrive, it's a good word, actually, rather than survive. I think it's- That's why I, I chose it. it. That's why I chose it. Yeah. Rather than say, oh, I'm surviving, it's like, oh, I'm surviving. Like, yeah, you're right. How do we thrive, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I'm on workshops and I'm having a, a fantastic time. It would, you know, you're doing some great works being done on, on, in, in the workshops, mm -hmm. as well as when I get on set or if I, you know, get a gig, a theater gig, um, it, it definitely, lends itself and definitely supports me in the next job, mm, you know? Of course, yeah. So it's about staying as proactive as possible, keep keep on the front foot, you know, keep searching, yeah. keep doing as much as possible, just doing it all the time, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, practicing the craft, That's it. you know, um, doesn't make sense me not doing nothing in between, like just only marking time. When am I going to get the next job? Mm. Um, and, you know, also work brings work as well. I, I think whether you're doing a workshop, whether you're, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're doing a, a little um, one-off for someone, you know, voluntary, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know who's going to be, you don't know who's going to see that, you know, um, how, no matter how big or small the part is. Mm. So do you search out for your own auditions and things as well as your agent, or do you just leave all that to your agent? No, um, it's a combination of both. Um, what's happened for me over the years, because um, I've been doing this a little while, is a lot of people, you know, who know me, who see my work, who know my work, will get in touch and go, hey, I've got a brilliant part I think will be good for you. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, um, I'm a friend of such and such and I saw you in XYZ. I would love for you to audition, you know? So, I mean, that happened for me recently, actually. Mm. A director I'd worked with, Jesus, what, four years ago on a HBO production, emailed me out the blue and said, hey, Stanley, long time, hope you're well. So, hope you survived, you know, the whole lockdown of that. Are you still working? You know, you still doing? I'm like, yeah. So he's like, <laughs> I'm shooting a feature film. 
I would love you to audition for it. You know what I mean? Wow. So he put my name forward and he said, would I mind self-taping for it? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I'm not, you know I mean? I'm not like, oh, just give me the role. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of course, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. nice too. Yeah, of course, of course. But I self-taped for it. He sent it to the powers that be, the producer and everyone else. And, and I got the gig. So it just, you know, there's, <clears throat> there is this thing as, I don't know, there's this saying in it. You're only as good as your last job, you know? Mm. So make it good, you know? And that, when you say that, you don't mean you're only as good as the job you've got. What you mean is you're only as good as how good you are in that job. Because you could be doing yeah. a student film or an independent film, which turns out to Absolutely. be horrendous. But as long as you are good in it, then it's yeah. Good, yeah. right? Absolutely. You're only as good as your last job. And what that means for me is, you know, going to drama school, you know, we talked about this before once, We, you know, um, is learning how to survive in the industry, you know, and one of the things they told me, uh, let me turn my phone off, one of the things they told me in drama school was, you know, we chose you because you can already act, we didn't choose you, um, we're not here to teach you how to act, we're here to teach you how to survive in the industry. And it's about using those tools, um, but also etiquette as well. You know, how you conduct yourself on set, how you conduct yourself in the theater, how do you get on, how do you treat, you know? Um, Be a good no, person. Yeah, how do you treat everyone? Mm -hmm. How do you treat the runners? Do you know what I mean? How do you treat the caterers, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, and that's, so for me, only as good as your last job encompasses all of that because, um, Yes, yeah, about, you know, hitting your marks, whatever, getting into character and all that stuff. But it's also about how you get on with people mm -hmm. and do they want to work with you again? <laughs> you know, so okay. when when Bill got in touch, great director, Bill Thomas, we had a blast and on the HBO production we did, but also there was this camaraderie, there was this, everyone treated everyone with respect and honor down to the cleaners, to the runners, to the DP, you know, mm. and, and, and people remember you for that. Of course. You know, they're like, oh, I would like to work with that guy again, or that lady again, whoever, do you know? Of course, yeah. So say if like, obviously <clears throat> you were lucky to get that first job, that HBO job, Say if mm -hmm. you haven't landed something like that, you're an actor who's trying to land their first role, sort of professional established role. Mm -hmm. What do you do in that situation? Is it simply a question of luck and time and patience or do you put in, you know, are you even more proactive than the next guy? So what, what's your advice on someone in that position there? Um, <clears throat> I used to watch a lovely program called Inside the Actor, Actor Studio. Have you ever watched that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And yet they had all these Hollywood actors come on anyway. They had George Clooney on one time and I was just listening to him. And George Clooney hit, for me, hit it on the, on, on, on the head, hit the nail on the head. He said, I'm not a better actor than anybody else. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. This industry that we're in, sorry to burst your bubble, guys, but it's very much down to luck. There's a hell of a lot of luck involved in this and what i mean by that is it's, it's just being in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. i see it as a numbers game and just to elaborate when i say a numbers game the more auditions you do the more likelihood you're gonna get a part mm -hmm. you know the less auditions you do the less likelihood that you're gonna get a part yeah if I'm auditioning constantly, you know, all the time, like three, four times a week, it's just a matter of time before I, I get something. And then when I do get that audition, whatever that audition is, who knows what's going to happen? It could be the next big thing. I mean, look at Friends. We've all heard, we know, we've all heard the stories, in it? Mm. Like, for example, um, the lovely June Brown who played Doc Cotton, who just passed recently, as we just heard in the news, mm -hmm. you know, 35 years on EastEnders, right? Wow. But guess what? 
that part was only meant to be for a couple of weeks. She wasn't meant to be there for 35 years. It was only meant to be a short stint on EastEnders. But she done so well with the character. She brought Doc Cotton to life in an extravagant way that it, it, she became, you know, an integral part of, of the show, as those EastEnders fans will know, you know. So it just gives you an idea, you know, you know, of what, of we're, what we're talking about here. Of course. And it's funny because you can kind of plan. I don't think she plan to be on the EastEnders for 35 years. Do you know what I mean? No. It's just like she just brought so much to the role that she ended Absolutely. up, they just were like, yep, yeah, let's just keep her forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And this is the thing is when we go back to you're only as good as your last job in the respect that whatever you bring to that character, mm. you know, that's what, that's what we're going to, that's what people are going to remember. Mm -hmm. What you did with that character, mm. you know, um, and as I said, I just finished shooting this feature. I played a bit of a villain. And, you know, you know, Bill got back to me and was like, wow, you know what? It was so great to see you bring this character to life. I can't really go into much detail because of all the NDAs and all that. Yeah, sure. But, you know, when he said, you know, the feedback, oh, it was so great to see you bring this character to life. Mm. I know exactly what he's talking about. Because all as actors, we everyone does everyone will have their take on what they think a character should look like, act like, or be like. You know, the lovely Samuel Jackson. He makes sure that every single character he dresses himself, you know, he he he'll choose whether like, right, I'm gonna shave my head, my hair, sorry, or I'm gonna um, I'm going to grow a long beard or I'm going to, do you know what I mean? To me, and I, and I, yeah, sorry, just using sorry. costume or accents or your body in any sort of way is such a yeah. good way of unlocking a character. A hundred percent. And I, and I'm a great believer in that. Like I've played roles where I've shaved all my hair off, you know, because I felt it was warranted to this. Cause I, you know, when I, when I, um, when I get a, when I get a role, I want to get into the nuts and bolts of this character. So I'll dress and I'll do stuff that's not asked of me, you know, like shave my hair off or you know shave whatever it takes. You know, put earrings in and you know all sorts. I've done all sorts, you know. But then that's what makes it. That's what for me brings that character to life, mm -hmm. you know. I think the longer you spend within a character, the more comfortable you are. So walk around at home as the character, you know, go out to the shops, walk around the park, as long as you're not a crazy person, you know, then it's okay, I think. So yeah. the more comfortable you are and the more, yeah, sort of within the character you are throughout the day, then it, you just come on set and it's like, well, you don't have to do anything. You just stay as you are, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, like absolutely. the more prep you do, the easier it is. So how much prep do you do for a character? Like, do you do like backstories? Do you do like, what, what do you do in your prep? Or does it change every time? Uh, it it, it changed. Well, I have the basics, which is the backstory. Mm -hmm. You know, what are they like to eat? What's their favorite color? All these basic stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, who are they? You know, I like the character I just played recently. He was a proper hardcore. He was a loner. Um, he's, you know what I mean? He liked to eat meat that was really, really, really you know, cooked yeah. rare. Yeah. You know, he'll eat alone, even though he's part of a big, uh, um, again, I don't give away too much, but he's a part of a, a, a bit bigger group, you know, sure, sure. being a bit of a, a, a bandit, you know. Um, so yeah, the, the, I the, the backstory I do on my character is just the basics like you learn when you when you're in drama school, you know, mm. coloring your character in. Mm. What's their favorite color? Are they married? Have they got kids? You know, what their what's their favorite foods? You know, and all this kind of stuff. Depending on the year, what are, you know, if they watch or they listen or what do they do? What's their hobbies? You know, mm -hmm. um, and. You know, nine times that. So, so for me, that's my basics. That's my that's my basics, and then I build on that. Mm. 
And then I go, okay, what does is, what is this guy look like? Well, you know, what, what am I feeling here? Has he got hair? Has he not got hair? Has he got a big beard? Is he, you know, what's he look like, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. And then, like, what he sounds like, how he walks, you know, everything. Yeah. And yeah. the backstory is, like, is done not just for the sake of doing, but I think it's so you can fill your head as much with character thoughts as possible when you're on set and you're ready to play as opposed to action mm-hmm. thoughts. Obviously you have to know like where the camera is or where the audience are, depending on if you're doing stage or film. But at the end of the day, you wanna be thinking the thoughts of the character as much as possible as opposed to Stanley's thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And <clears throat> I think what's important is, is getting in the zone. Mm. You know, um, again, going back to this, you know, um, recent job I did, we had a fight scene between me and one of the actors <clears throat> and uh, we're using swords and whatnot, you know. And there was a point, <clears throat> you know, we'd done a few takes. You know, first we rehearsed the, the combat, the fight scene, you know, because when you're using swords and whatnot, you've got to be, you know, you, we, we have to be on it. Yeah. And there was one point the director said, Stanley, that's, this is really good, um, but I feel you're holding back a bit, you know. Okay. I'm like, okay, cool, thank you, you know, because I'm, I'm also concerned. I don't want to harm this other actor and, and, and vice versa. So then there's a point where it's like, okay, we've got permission to let go a bit more, more now. Do you know what I mean? That's what makes a good director, isn't it? Being able to see and give you that, you know, give you that space. So then we let go. It's like, okay, we know this fight scene. We know it. We know the moves. Okay, I can let go now. Let me let go. Mm-hmm. Boom, we let go. <laughs> and I swear to God, there was a moment we looked at each other and it was like we were fighting for our lives, wow. literally. And his eyes changed, my eyes changed. Mm-hmm. And we looked at each other and we were like... <sighs> You know, we just had bing, 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 and we were going at it again. And, the, you know, it, yeah, yeah. it was a, just that moment when, I don't know if this makes sense, when you're in the zone. Mm. I didn't know where the camera was. I didn't know where the director was, nor did I care. That's their job. Yeah. <laughs> Let them figure that out. Do you know what I mean? Because we're going to have to shoot it again anyway to, to get from, you know, to shoot front, back, side, whatever. But what's great is, being able to get in that zone because when we're in the zone, then it becomes believable. Mm. You know, it becomes believable. You know, I really want to talk about this <clears throat> zone that you're talking about because I've heard, I've experienced it myself and I've heard other actors talk about it. And it's, I think, well, for me, I know it's the addiction of the craft is why I keep coming back to it too attain to reach those moments they they're fleeting they don't last for hours you know they come and they go and that but when you're in it you're not thinking about anything really apart from what you're doing in that situation with that other person do you know what I mean it's no there's no it's almost like a moment of bliss and quiet even though you can be yeah. screaming at the other person it's a weird Absolutely. zen state and I think to me that's what brings me back to acting over and over again just to try to reach that level and sometimes you get there and sometimes you don't, you know? Yeah. And I guess for me as an actor, I love to live in the zone. Mm. I work and, and I encourage the other actor I'm working with to get in the zone with me. Mm. I almost feel like sometimes I force them into the zone. Well, you know? how do you do that? How do you get them into the zone? So for me, Okay, lots of people who have worked with me would know one thing about me. I like to get off book early, <laughs> right? True. Yeah, free it. Free That's it. me. Yeah. And for those who are new, who are listening or on this, this whole thing about acting, getting off book, what we mean is learning our lines, basically. Um, as soon as I get a script, you know, especially you know, for theatre or film, I like to learn my lines straight away i like to get in get into it early get off book early what that does for me is it means by the time we open the show or even when we're doing blocking 
I'm almost already, especially with, I'm already almost already off book, which means I'm free to, to start getting into my character, to start really embracing this person without thinking about, oh, what's the next line, if that makes sense. Of course. And therefore, by me getting in the zone, I feel like it gives the other actor I'm working with permission to join me in that zone. So they'll see that, okay, hold on, this guy's, well, okay, roll, all right. We're in, okay, right. Boop, 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 you know, you, you, the, the, you know, what's an analogy? Um, but in, bim, bim. Okay, I don't know why this comes, I, I, I skip a lot. I do a lot of skipping for my tennis. Yeah. I don't know, you know, when them, you see them young girls playing double dutch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, you know, they, 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 the rope is going around and they jump in and, you know, boom, boom. And then someone else joins them. And now there's two of them jumping around this big skipping rope. Mm -hmm. That's what it is for me, like getting in that zone, mm -hmm. you know. And when that skipping rope's going around, you know, if someone's in there already and someone's trying to get in, you've got you got to wait. I don't know if this analogy is the right one, but anyway... You can't just walk straight into the skipping rope. You've got to wait, boom, and then jump in. But once you're in and you're both jumping together, that's it. You're in the zone. You're not thinking about the rope anymore. Mm. That makes sense. Of course, you're just jumping. Of you course. Know. And I think it's like, I imagine it like, imagine somebody who's really super passionate about something and they're just explaining it and you can see or see the passion just flowing out of them you know it's hard yeah. not to get drawn into that that's why Absolutely. i think a lot of people find passionate people very passionate people attractive is because it's an attractive thing and i thought that that passion comes from total dedication and commitment so the more dedicated committed the more in it you are the more passionate you are the more people are like i want I want, it's like a magnet effect they're sort of drawn in so that's why i imagine it that you're so prepared and you're so ready and you're so just like willing to say, fuck it, let's, let's play hard now. Yeah. That the other people are like, oh, that's it. I guess we've got permission from Stan. We're playing hard now. So they jump in with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's permission to allow that other person to shine. Definitely. No. I think the best actors <laughs> make, make other actors around them better. Mm -hmm. and that's through that dedication and commitment that people yeah have. you know what i mean so sometimes like if you're in a scene and there's maybe two sort of weaker actors and a stronger actor comes in it, it raises their game it's like when you play tennis with somebody we know this when you play tennis with somebody who's better than you <coughs> you raise your game you know you train with actors who are on the same level or better than you you get better you know yeah absolutely and i think you know, like doing this podcast, you know, as you you mentioned, you know, that you love talking about acting, you mm -hmm. know, as an actor, you love to explore, hence why you wanted to do this, you know. Yeah. And, you're, and I can see your passion for acting, that your passion for the craft. And you're right, you know, not all of us make it to Hollywood. Not all of us make it to become these, you know, A, whatever, whatever. But us jobbing actors who are out there treading the boards day in, day out, in all kinds of weather, mm -hmm. all different kinds of pay as well. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Putting up with whatever, whatever. This is where the passion comes, comes in, Definitely. you know, because I feel like, I believe, I feel, don't get me wrong, of course you can learn how to act in, in one respect. But again, I, I believe this is something that's quite, innate that's that that keeps that is why a lot of us as actors keep going we just it's this this passion and joy that's inside of us that we we just want to play um because let's not forget the original actors were called players back in you know way in the 16th century 17th century shakespearean days they were called players not actors and they will play and that's where the word comes from i'm going to see a play you know, um, and you know, it's that we 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 have this innately in, inside of us, mm. and I believe that coupled with going to drama school, 
and learning the craft in a different arena now is how do we how do we what do we do with this passion how do we keep going with it and how do we survive or mm. thrive thrive is a better word do you know yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, so how it's, do we been, it's been a while it's been a while for you now so what are your you know what are your secrets to secrets to this persistence over these years this sustainability like what do you mm. do in order to to keep that fire burning i mean we talked about workshops and stuff but in terms of ment in your mental state your mentality like how do you view life and acting and keep it going yeah interestingly for me there's a certain, okay, one has to arrive at a place, or let me talk for myself, where I had to let go. I don't know if this makes sense. I remember when I, um, the earlier years and whatnot, when you, let, you leave drama school, you first get into it, you really are looking to get to Hollywood. You know, we, you know, we're all like, yeah, yeah. Oh, guess what? I met this director and I met that director. Oh yeah, I'm going to do a casting workshop and blah, blah, blah. We're all hammering or chiseling away, trying to find our way in. And then it becomes slow, you get tired and you're like, <sighs> you know, at some point one has to let go of that concept of, oh my God, I'm gonna get there when actually you're already there. You know, we're already here. If you are working as an actor, you've made it. Yeah. Definitely. No matter how big or small the part, you have made it. Yes. In my yes. book. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. If you get a job as an actor, whether it's in the theatre, film, even if it's a if if it's a student um, film, you've made it. Yeah. You're yeah. doing your craft, you're doing your passion. Mm -hmm. And what I mean when I say, I, for me, I had to let go. And once I'd let go and let go of what? What am I letting go of? Mm -hmm. Expectations. You know, as there's, there's a lovely saying, resentment are the seed for expectations. Or expectations, I beg your pardon, are the seed for resentment. Yes. So if I don't, if I have an expectation on myself to be a Hollywood A-star actor and I'm not getting anywhere near it, then the seeds of resentment are planted and I'll just get more resentful towards myself, towards the industry, towards everything else and go, well, what's the point? Mm -hmm. What's the point of keep, keeping on going, you know? Mm -hmm. um, this is my second time around, as you know. Um, I started acting as a teenager. I went to Anna Shears Theatre, one of the most fantastic theatres on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned, simply because she opened the doors up for inner city kids like me who couldn't afford to go to drama school. Um, a, lot of, a lot of great actors like Pauline Quirk went to Anna Shears Theatre. Mm. A lot of the guys from EastEnders, The Bill, London's Burning, Birds of a Feather, these great drama series who had authentic East End actors like myself, you know, grace, you know, the presence of these shows that made these shows what they are today. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I got a touch on it as a black actor. Back in the days, there weren't many great roles for myself, you know, and I was always the, the thief, the burglar, the robber. You know, I did Crime Watch file like three times, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I got to a place where, I'm sorry guys, but I just became despondent. I mean, who wouldn't, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. However, not all of us did. And there's some great guys who I've worked with before, Adrian Lester, you know, and who stayed and carried on and didn't become despondent and hung on in there, power to him. And look at where he's at now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know, things have changed from way back then. And I'm talking, we're going, what, 30 years ago, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and my, for me, as a, as a black actor back then, I, even though I was, you know, I did these little, you know, bitty parts, you know, again, I was, again, the burglar, the robber and whatnot. 
And I just got to a place where I was like, I don't want to be the robber, the thief, the burglar anymore. Do you know what I mean? And I stopped acting for a bit mm -hmm. because of it. I became despondent, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I went off, did my own thing, lived some life, um, sorted my life out, you know. And I got back into the industry at 38. I went to drama school, Mount View, yeah. after winning the scholarship, you know. Great. And I, I graduated 2009. And the first job I got was playing Othello, you know, three month tour in Ireland. Yeah. You know, and I was like, wow, this is more like it. You know, <laughs> that's how you do it right there. This yeah. is how we do it. <laughs> this is how we roll. Yeah. And I remember being at, at drama school and, and one of the teachers or a few of the teachers would say, you're going to make a great Shakespeare and actor. And I was thinking like, are you talking about me? Uh -huh. This kid from yeah. Do you know what I mean? And sure enough, I've done Othello, um, Titus and Jonicus, Measure for Measure. I've been at the Globe. Was very fortunate to be at the Globe doing Romeo and Juliet. You know, I'm playing Friar Lawrence, and you know, I'm like, wow, these great roles that I felt I just I couldn't access way back then when I first started. Do you know what I mean? And now, as we know, the industry has taken another big step and a change. You've got like Bridgerton with, you know what I mean? We've got black people in period dramas. We've got black people doing more adverts, you know, like, you know, Colgate. Moving in the know. right direction, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, of course, there's still a hell of a lot more room. There's a hell of a lot more growth and, and you know, to go, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for this actor here, I'm, I'm grateful that I've come, uh, you know, I had my second round and I'm, I'm, I'm doing my passion, you know. Um, I want to I dig into that, what you were saying about letting go of your expectations and your mindset. Yeah. So I think it's related to what you were just saying about being grateful, having gratitude, um, grateful for the jobs that you get, practicing gratitude on a daily basis fact that you were mm -hmm. able to pursue this career when a lot of people just simply can't afford to or are unable to for whatever reason so mm. having that gratitude on a daily basis is that does that tie into the letting go of expectations yeah um you know my gratitude comes from a hell of a lot of things like you know look i come from the other side of the tracks you know you know um I was a bit of a, you know, I had a bit of a rough upbringing. Um, I think I mentioned, you know, I, I've a written autobiography, um, which is due out in October. Yeah. And it's already on pre-order in Waterstones and, and Blackwell. And, all of that. and the book is called Little Big Man. Little Big Man. And it's about this young boy, grew up in the 70s, children's homes, foster parents, detention centers, ball stools and young offenders and prisons and drugs and all of that. That was me. And I went, you know, come out. So it's, it's like a rags to riches, you know, like how did this young boy who went for all of that end up at the Globe, end yeah. up playing Othello, end up at the Emperor Fringe, you know? Incredible. How? How? So this word gratitude is a big one for me. You know, I stepped into recovery. I've been in recovery for some time now. Uh, no, I, you know, normally I don't really talk about it. It's very personal to me, but hey, my book's coming out, so I can't <laughs> hide it now. Can't hide now, yeah. You know, I've been in recovery for quite some time. I, you know, I, I stepped into recovery world when I was 23. Mm. I'm 51, so it's, in June, it's going to be 28 years I've been That's in amazing, recovery. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well so, this, thank you very much. This, this word, um, gratitude, it's a big one for me. Um, and I'm grateful for a lot of things that have led me to be able to enjoy my craft. When I first started acting, I came, I had no money in my pocket. I was working two, three jobs and, you know, doing silver service and you name it. Do you know what I mean? I was doing it, selling posters on the street, you know, whatever I could do in between to keep the acting going. Mm -hmm. um, this time around, I was very fortunate, you know, that I've got my own little property business on the side that I started 20 odd years ago by buying my first property, you know. Okay. So the rental I get from my properties allows me to indulge in my craft, you know, because as we know, 
especially being in London, it's expensive, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's crazy. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. And and I and, and my heart goes out for those who, who you know like. How do you survive? How do you keep going? Because acting can be expensive, <laughs> you know. Very much so. Yeah. You know, you got to pay for everything, you know. Um, yeah. But my that's, so my gratitude comes in that I've, you know, managed to find a way to practice my craft, to be in my craft. Um, to survive my past that I can now indulge and 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 be free mm. and enjoy what I what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Of course. It's about yeah, doing whatever you can, whatever it takes to have that freedom of exploration. Because at the end of the day, acting is exploration, isn't it? You're exploring yourself, you're exploring other people, you're exploring life. It's it's the exploration of what it means to be human the human condition right so Absolutely. um we don't have much time but i want to finish up on do you have any like words of advice or words of wisdom so for people who may be slightly waning now in terms of their motivation or inspiration for this career or any career that they're in hmm. any kind of last words of wisdom or um anything you could give words of hope yeah, you know what? Um, look, <clears throat> there's a lovely saying that Uncle Bob Marley says. Um, Love him. And I call him Uncle Bob because, you know, I grew up listening to Bob Marley from I was like... Obviously yeah. no relation to you, though. No relation, but we call Uncle Bob. And my son, my bless him, you know, he calls... Uncle, he also said Uncle Bob, you know. I love it, Uncle Bob. Bob Marley says, when it rains everybody's rooftop gets wet. Okay. So when it rains, everybody's rooftop gets wet, not just mine. Okay. So we may feel like the rain's only raining on our rooftop. Sometimes it can feel that way, but the reality is it, it's not the way, it's not fact, mm. you know? So meaning you're not, the, you're not alone on, on, your, on whatever you're going through, you are not alone. Um, as actors, we know this is one of the toughest, toughest industries to survive in. You know, if I use the analogy of a tennis player, you know, you're out there on your own. You're at one side of the net, the other guy's at the other side. Yeah, you've got your, 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 your you know, you've got your guys on the side or whoever, but you're, it's still down to you, isn't it? You know, um, and as actors, it's down to us to find those goodies, you know? Um, and my, I would say, you know, look, you know, lovely, another lovely quote from John Lennon, you know, life is what happens to us while we're busy making other plans. Of course. Life is what plan. happens to us while we're busy making other plans. Love it. So it's okay, you know, it's okay to feel tired. It's okay to feel weary. It's okay to feel depressed even, you know what I mean? I think we got him, and what's great about, I think we mentioned, I mentioned to you before about this whole social media and these platforms and doing stuff like this, is we can all finally breathe and let go and embrace, you know, uh, our defects and our shortcomings and go, hey, I've got some too. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's swap, let's share, <laughs> well, you know? Yes. And it's okay, it really is okay. Mm -hmm. to feel weary, to feel tired, to feel depressed, to feel lonely. We all feel this, you know what I mean? Um, but then how do we keep going? For me, the way I keep going is I like to look at myself. I like to do the work on myself. And when I, do, when I talk about doing work on myself, you know, um, whether it's I might have a bit of therapy from time to time, or I might I'll read self-help books mm -hmm. that look at the inner stuff and how we think and how we feel to have a bit more understanding of who I am as a human being first and foremost before the actor you know um Brian Cranston really put it in a great way um I read his autobiography I love reading autobiographies especially about actors because you hear their journeys and what Brian Cranston talked about in his autobiography was if you can 
do the work on yourself and, and, and clean up, because we all have baggage. We all have baggage. So if you can take care of your baggage, do the work, look at self, when you do step onto that stage or step into that, into that character, you're, you're, you're much more clean mm. to be able to embrace and, and, and be in the moment mm. without your own stuff going on, you know? Of course. Which, which makes sense, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I'll end on this, you know, like my experience of doing the work on self, you know, I believe has helped me to become the person I am today in the sense of it's helped me to find clarity, it's helped me to find be for balance, you know, it's helped me to find acceptance with who I am mm. as a person and not give myself too much of a hard time because the only person we could give a hard time is ourselves, isn't it? We can get the baseball bat and beat ourselves up. Like, oh, I should have done better at that audition. I should have said this, I, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I would say my final words is, look, be gentle with yourselves. I love it. Be gentle with yourselves out there. Find because yourself, yeah. Yeah, because life's tough as it is already. And if you're gentle with yourself, it means you can be gentle with others. 100%. And you know, keep going one day at a time, nice and easy, lemon squeezy, uh -huh. do the work, you know, do the work, you know, um, and I love, again, Denzel, my, one of my favorite, you know, actors who I really look up to, he says, fall down, fall, he says, fall down six times, get up eight. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. And Amazing. then I, and then I'll see you guys at work. <laughs> Thank you, know? you so much. That was incredible. Thank you so much for your time, Stan. And um, Absolute yeah. pleasure. I learn always so much when I talk with you. So, yeah, I hope to speak with you again soon. Absolutely. Thanks Absolute so pleasure. Take care. Thanks for having me as, on as your first guest. Of course. Thank you for being the very first guest. All right. Take care. Speak soon. Take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.